Welcome, this is a quick video showing you how to install OpenVPN Access Server on a VPS or something known as a virtual private server. Um, a lot of people nowadays, they may, may want to run a VPN. It can help with a lot of things, uh, such as getting around geo locations. So some services like say Netflix may require you to be in a certain country. Um, I know like the UK has the BBC, I think it's called the iViewer for their news station. And you can only watch that for free if you're located in England. So if you have a VPN in England, it'll make your traffic look like it's coming from England, even though you can be anywhere else in the world. So that's, that's one reason people would want a VPN. So I wanna show you a quick way how to set one up. And the software I'm gonna to use today is something called OpenVPN. It's a free piece of software uh, for personal use. You have, can use up to two people simultaneously or two connections simultaneously through an OpenVPN server. For personal use, this is gonna be plenty. Obviously, if you're running a business or something of that nature, uh, you're probably gonna, you're gonna need to license it, but even then, it's, it's still relatively cheap and affordable. So the first thing you're gonna need is you're going to need a VP, a VPS server or a dedicated server or some piece of hardware to install this on. What I like to do is look at company, um, this website called Luen Box. They usually have, you know, really, really good deals on, you know, um, VPSs. You don't need a whole bunch of power in terms of a VPS to use for a VPN connection, right? Um, 128 megs of RAM isn't be plenty. So something like this would be would be great, you know. It's 10 bucks for an entire year and, you know, has 256 megs of RAM, which is plenty. Um, you don't need much disk space. It has a terabyte of traffic, so lots of web surfing can be done through it, downloading, etc. And it's only, you know, $10 a year. There's different carriers. Um, you know, obviously a whole bunch of different providers you can use for a VPS. Um, but I recommend checking out Low End Box. They do list budget VPSs. Um, perfect for, you know, the type of use we're looking at here. And even then, you could probably sub enough power left over to do something like run a small web server or whatnot, which is, which is great. So, after you, you know, purchase a VPS, you're going to get some login credentials. You're going to log into the command line through something called PuTTY. Now, what I am, am doing here is I am logging in for the first time. I have a VPS that's actually set to expire today. So, if you see the IP and stuff, I don't really care because it's going to be gone after today. So, this is a, a great, a great demo. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through, you know, downloading and installing and configuring OpenVPN server, and also show you how to install the client that you would put on your desktop. They also make um, apps that you can use for your smartphone as well, which I do use that as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in to our VPS, right? So I'm going to log in as root, and let me see if I remember the the password for the server. I do. So if you look, uptime, it's only been up five minutes. I literally just reset this VPS back to factory defaults um, before I, you know, started this video. So you're going to see, the one thing you want to note is the version that you of Linux you have installed. Um, I think for this, you know, any version of Ubuntu should be fine. I prefer the LTS versions because they, you know, long-term support. I'm using 12.04 LTS and I'm using the 64-bit version. We're going to want to note this stuff before we go to, um, you know, install OpenVPN on our on our system here. So we're going to swap over to Google, and we're going to look at for OpenVPN AS, and it's going to say Access Server Overview. We're going to go to that. We're going to choose Access Server Software Packages. And we want to go to Ubuntu because, you know, hey, we're going to be using Ubuntu. <clears throat> and if you know, they have different versions. They, they basically have it compiled for LTS versions. We're using 12 and we're using 64 bits. So we're going to right click this and choose copy link address. Now what we want to do is go back to our VPS um, SSH box or SSH. And we're going to basically type in wget, which is to download a file and because we copied the link if you right click 
and I'm using putty by the way to make this connection it just pastes the in info in there so we're gonna let it you know download the file um, it's gonna take a you know a few minutes this current VPS it was a really really budget VPS it has it only has a 10 megabit a second link but it is unmuted traffic means as much bandwidth as you want to use completely um, but it is only 10 megabits a second so, okay, so it's installed, or sorry, downloaded. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the package. So when you download a file that has a .deb extension, file extension into an Ubuntu or Debian box or anything that's derived from Debian Linux, you can just use a package manager to install the software and make it really easy. So it's dpkg for Debian package manager, a dash, an i, if you type in the first letter and hit the tab key, it will fill the rest out for you, which is great. So we'll do that, then hit enter. It's going to install the software package. So right now, OpenVPN server is installing. And once it's done installing, it's going to give you the um, login sites for this particular server, right? So it's, it's the administration and the client site. So you obviously want to note those and take those down. Um, but we're going to need to do a couple things as well. So the next thing we want to do is want to set the root or the master OpenVPN password. The default OpenVPN user is OpenVPN. So you type in P-A-S-S-W-D OpenVPN and we'll type in and we'll pick a new password, right? There you go. So now I have a the OpenVPN password set for logging in. So we're going to log into the admin URL here. Okay. And hope that picked it. So we're going to go up to this and type in admin. So it's going to tell me, yeah, it's not private. We're going to proceed to the site anyways. So you're going to get the login box right here, right? So open VPN that's the username for the for the thing and then we just set the password for that username <clears throat> so we're gonna agree we're logged in so what it's gonna do it's gonna show you the server's address and in most cases in VPS's you almost never need to um, you know change any of these settings that are default configured so it's going to show you current users, status overview, um, you know SSL settings. So you know which TLS we want to use, SSL. Um, you know, essentially, I prefer to always have TLS over SSL, but you know that's that's just me because if there's some um, SSL is a lot stronger. If you go to the server network settings, this is where you can change the ports. So different port numbers. Uh, generally, you you want to use UDP, in my opinion. Um, TCP has some additional overhead, packet verification, but the OpenVPN protocol also has, you know, packet verification built in. So you don't need double packet verification. Not necessary. So I always configure my clients to use UDP instead of TCP. Just a little little law. Uh, item there. So literally that's it. So we have the ser server software itself installed and running. It's already run the, on the, that VPS. It took literally, um, if I wasn't talking, it would take literally 30 seconds to set the server up and get it running. Um, so then what you have is, if you go just to the default site, it's going to have a, ooh, I think I have to use my Firefox in this thing on a minute. I believe for some reason on this particular item, my Chrome doesn't like it. There we go. So go to Firefox. So in the username box, we'll type in OpenVPN and then the password. So um, the first time you go in, you're going to get that item. You, you log in, you can download the software. If you sit back and forward, it'll take you to the screen here. So there's a couple items you can download here. If you have Windows, you download the software and install it. And it installs a you know a program on your computer that runs at startup, and then in your task tray you're going to have an open VPN icon. You would click on that, and then you could tell it to connect to the VPN, 
shows like the IP address, then connect. If you do that, it'll pop up a box, and I'll show you what I'm talking about because I'll open it up. I just won't log in. Like this. And then you would type in your password and hit connect, and then your computer would be connected to the VPN. Uh, another item that you can do, however, it says yourself a user locked profile. So what this downloads is like a profile that you can use on a smartphone. So if you download this file and transfer it to your smartphone, you install the OpenVPN software on your smartphone or that particular app. You know, I hate the word app, but if you install the app on your smartphone, you can then say import this file. And what it will do is it will bring all the settings for the OpenVPN server into your Android phone. And then you can use also use your phone to connect, which is great, especially if you're, you know, using your phone uh, on a public Wi-Fi, like a coffee shop or you're out, you know, at a airport, for example, and you want to encrypt your traffic and make sure it's protected. Uh, you can then, you know, use your VPN server on your smartphone. Literally, that's all there is to installing an open VPN server and getting it running. It takes, you know, a total of... <laughs> You know, a, a few minutes, if that. Uh, another thing I would highly recommend doing when you install a VPN or a VPS software, I recommend you update your uh, VPS to make sure you have all the patches applied. Um, you do that by typing sudo apt-get, which is like the sudo is the saying run. It's like run as administrator essentially. App get update. What that's going to do is update all the software uh, from the repositories, get like the, a listing of all the newest versions. So it doesn't actually update your computer yet, it just updates the list of uh, available updates essentially. That's how you want to think of it. So it's going to run through that. And the next command would be an upgrade command, which I'll show you in a second. So, and then upgrade. And it'll say, yes, I want to install those items. I know it's going to take more disk space. And that way, we're making sure, you know, any any software that's running on this VPS is the most up-to-date version uh, in case there's, you know, any particular vulnerabilities and whatnot. But literally, it's that easy to install OpenVPN and get it running on a Linux box. Uh, I hope you guys found this information useful. And thanks.